Intensely busy in the cockpit, the pilot simply forgot to arm the spoilers. Had they deployed, the MD-80 aircraft might have overshot the runway, but it would have stopped before hitting the catwalk. The pilots had made serious and ultimately fatal errors, but investigators wanted to know why. They suspected that pressures earlier in the flight led to these mistakes. They turned their attention to the weather. It was clear to us that severe weather had been in the area around the time of the accident. How it played a part was one of the things we had to try to discover. And putting the radar images in, the observations, trying to put it all together, would take weeks, of course, to get this information done. The NTSB wanted to know what role the weather had played in the crash, and had the pilots been fully aware of the dangers. See how we're going right in the middle of this crap? One of the concerns that all pilots have when they're trying to land an aircraft is, of course, making sure that the crosswinds that they may experience don't exceed the capabilities of either themselves or the aircraft. The wind's now 350 at 30 gusts 45. Can we land? This particular flight crew had a limitation, not imposed by themselves, but imposed by the company. And that was that they were not allowed to exceed a 10 knot crosswind on a wet runway. Crosswind limitations are clearly stated in the operating manual. The crew of 1420 were flying beyond regulation limits. The effect of the winds can be seen in this NTSB animation, showing the captain's desperate last maneuvers. Winds definitely impacted the flight. If you look at the animation, you'll see him fighting the winds. Definitely not good. We're down. On the brakes. Other one, other one. Other but when one, you start talking one. about a wet runway, thunderstorms, not good. This NTSB weather animation overlays the path of the aircraft with ground radar images of the storm. Bushman and Oracle landed in lightning, torrential rain, and hail, and the crosswinds gusting well over the limit. Based on the information that we had from ground-based weather radar, the flight crew of 1420 should have been seeing majority of that storm. They would have been seeing the leading edge going green, rapidly changing the yellow to bright red. I can't see anything. Looking for a 460. As they progressed towards Little Rock, they started to paint the bad weather, not only on their onboard radar, but they could see out the window lightning. And one of the key statements that this captain made, which basically summarized the entire flight, was the captain saying, I hate droning around visual at night and weather without having any clue where we are. I hate droning around at night when I don't know where I am. That was such a key statement. It was at that point, by an experienced 10,000-hour captain, that he should have abandoned the approach going into Little Rock and either gone to his alternate or made his way back to Dallas. But to make a statement like that and then continue an approach to an airport where you have a thunderstorm in progress over the airport is a recipe for disaster. <laughs> 